So really the future is now. And in the past, before profilometry, before a few years ago for me, the part of the eye that we were fitting was the only part of the eye I did not know the shape of. How can you not think that this beautiful piece of equipment is not the future? Empirical fitting, accuracy of measurement is the future, but now. So I don't know, I would ask anyone in, uh, in the room if they fit a corneal lenses and they could imagine fitting corneal lenses without corneal topography. Of course they can, but the process will be uh, more longer, more complicated, and the reorders of the lens is uh, definitely uh, higher. So that's uh, exactly the same thing with uh, profilometry. Scleral profilometry, you do get more information with the cornea and the sclera, and it's much more than just topography, right? With scleral lenses, we're fitting on the sclera, so we need that information, and we need to know how we can custom tailor to create more of a freeform design type of lens. The, the eaglet gives us so much data and information. I mean, for, for me, even after simply reviewing the map, I have a mental picture of what the trial sends, what the trial set lens uh, will look like on the eye even before I've placed it there. Using profilometry today has been a huge advantage in choosing a better lens design to start with. So, the scleral lenses are very stable in the eye and they do not move, or at least they shouldn't move. Uh, and this is why, if we have information about the sclera uh, and the area where the lens lands, we can predict the on eye lens performance and the fitting relationship. And this is the basic the basis to design and fit more and more customizable scleral lenses and image-guided freeform scleral lenses as well. Profilometry fitting has come to stay as far as I'm concerned. Um, being about the pioneer in Africa, you know, with um, the eaglet, it's revolutionary. Imagine prior to this time I had to change sometimes seven, sometimes nine lenses with profilometry base which is the eaglet scanner i just do one two fits one two fits and that's it in our practice one of the most exciting ways that the esp has changed our practice is actually how we do our fitting with and what we use our staff for before i even see a patient my staff are trained to use the esp collect data that's high quality, and they use that data to pull starting lenses for me, get them on the patient before I even have to look at any of the data myself. I think the, the big keyword here for me is efficiency. Um, you know, more precision le leads to less remakes, uh, which leads to happier patients and happier me. So using the ESP and scleral profilometry has completely changed the way I fit lenses. And I'll never forget back when I first started using it, and a couple of consultants said to me, hey doc, we've noticed your fits are so different now than previously and so different than anybody else. But we've also noticed that it's working and you're not doing redos and we're not doing all this stuff. And so this, this piece of equipment is giving us a much quicker speed of choosing the first lens. It's giving us much more patient enjoyment in terms of um, allowing a more rapid response of um, the final fit uh, and it's making the visits for the patient more fun and interesting because we're using the highest latest technology to um, give a really really quick and rapid idea of the front uh, scleral topography to allow us to choose the lens get the patient on the go and give them vision straight away. It's phenomenal it's phenomenal the benefit it brings to my practice to my patients having to see technology that can create solutions is amazing you know it also means less time that you need to spend on the phone with consultation since you can very easily uh, send the image data directly to the lab uh, along with any notes one of the biggest things i like about it is that it's not really manufacturer dependent you can use this instrument with several lenses and also just the first fit lens algorithm for those that are new to fitting sclerals you know this really helps drive what first lens you're going to grab from your fit set or what it's going to recommend um, for your overfraction but it also just helps design the first lens to be really close 
to your final lens. So uh, empirical fitting with profilometry is essential. And I think that it will be our future, the future of everyone. Empirical fitting is uh, the future, but customized lenses are the future. And if you don't have the profilometry, you will not be able to uh, stay uh, at the level of the research and the, all the design that we are having. See the ability for us not just to focus on the sclera, but the ability to focus on the cornea, you know, the, the, the topography of the cornea and the sclera itself, the ability to be able to move, you know, up to, up to 22 millimeters and beyond the ability to, for us to be able to do orthokeratology which has really never been done here before is amazing we exercise get it our rights to um pretty much use anything it's a bit like the expanse of the sky all the lenses are available to us uh, i mainly fit aculens zen land smart scan 360 uh, Blanchard and Zen. I am feeding Konica and Walsack from the Black in Italy. Wave. And Visa. Sun Lens and Boston Sight Scleral. Adapter. One fit. When ScanFit is available, we're going to use that. I design all my lenses. I personally design all the rigid uh, compact lenses, uh, corneal lenses, orthopedic lenses, scleral lenses. And the Valley Contacts, uh, Ovid Ferris, and, and Custom Stable lenses. Some of Boston Sight's lenses. Scotty. Maxim 3D lenses from Aculens. I'm also feeding the Thelens, Bauchelon. ScanFit Pro. We have Boston Sight. Uh, one kit map uh, lenses from Blanchard. Zen Lens. So, all the labs we can, really. Um, enjoy, people. Hmm. Um, nope. I think uh, I would, I would cry. I would cry. And I might quit going to um, pursue a career in music. So it's it's tough. It's tough. Either that or become a bartender and go help serve um, sclerals on the beach for Brian Tompkins. It's a step back. Now I can still do it. And I it's now I'm 90% art and a small percent of technology and science versus with scleral profilometry, I'm 90% science and then throw in my art after that so yeah now imagining this i'm feeling oppressed I, of course i can find a way to fit lenses without profilometry but it would be oh my god uh, i'm just feeling bad already no i can i cannot imagine my practice without profilometry no i can't in fact, I started to fit uh, regularly scleral lenses in 2017 and I added the ESP to my practice in 2017. I realized that if I wanted to fit scleral lenses, I needed info about the sclera. So I'd say that I have never fitted scleral contact lenses without a profilometer. <laughs> sure, I'm not going back. I will get another eaglet. I will wait till the eaglet comes because with the eaglet, you can see, we can saw. I am not going back. The eaglet is the future. Thank you very much. Because I've gotten so used to having it there and it just being part of my workflow and my daily routine that if someone told me the eaglet was gone, I'd say, we better get that back or I'm quitting. No. I can't imagine. It's actually happened to me a few times. We've had a in and out relationship over the last decade, uh, the ESP and I together. And quite frankly, when I've lost it, when I don't have it, I feel like I've lost my fitting sparkle. It's tough, but uh, I wouldn't go back. Maybe I should get a second one in case someone takes that first one. So I will not be happy, M my patients neither. So definitely not. How would I feel if the ESP was taken away from me? I'd probably miss it as much as this little Rufus here, uh, I would be bereft and there would be a hole in my heart. So, um, ESP, you rock.